Good morning. My name is Tim from Plugged Into Leadership, your outlet for leadership success. You have chosen to join me on the show this morning, and we are going to be talking about wealth building. Wealth building Wednesday, I am calling this. And before we get too far, I want to ask a question. If you have a multi-level marketing, if you are in uh, Rowan Fields or Mary Kay or Juice Plus or Beachbody or any one of those, I want you to comment down in the comment section, uh, leave a comment and let us know what, uh, what's one of those industries, what's one of those businesses that you participate in. Because I, wa I want to know. I want to. That's going to be part of today's talk. So if you have one of those uh, businesses, if you're, uh, you know, a kind of an entrepreneur in that sense, where you're, you're, you're trying to make this other, you know, side business or whatever go, post it. I want to know about it. So one of the things that we we always talk about when we're talking about wealth building is that it's not necessarily uh, to be rich that it's not necessary to have all this money in the bank so that we can flaunt it, so we can have nice cars. It's so that you can live out your dreams. And, and I would imagine that each one of you that's watching this video, you're, you're gonna fall into one of these four categories that my friend Nate and I have come up with. And the first category is surviving. You are surviving. You're living paycheck to paycheck. If you lost your job tomorrow and you didn't find another job for three or four or five or six weeks, you would be putting stuff on credit cards. You probably have some debt already, some either student loan debt, maybe you have student loan debt and some credit card debt, maybe a, a line of credit on your house or something like that. Uh, and you also have a mortgage, but you, you are desperate for cash flow. You need money to be coming in regularly uh, by working just to be able to make ends meet the simplest, easiest things, gas in your car, groceries, whatever you are surviving. The next one is driving and driving and the, everyone that's driving, you, you may have a little bit of credit card debt, um, maybe a little bit of student loan debt. You definitely have a mortgage or you're paying rent or something like that. Um, but you might have like maybe one or two months in savings. You could be okay for four or six weeks if you lost a job, but you're, you're kind of working at it. You might be budgeting on a fairly regular basis. At least you have a general idea of what your budget is, but you maybe not be sticking to it, but it, it's out there. Uh, if those are they that are arriving, you have a significant amount of money in savings. You have very little to no debt, maybe just uh, student loans and maybe a mortgage or maybe just a mortgage or something like that. Um, and you have money in savings. You could go a few months if you lost your income and you're, you know, you're generous, you're giving money away. You don't feel that pressure of, uh, I mean, I, I got, I got to work. I got to make money. I got to do all this, uh, to continue that you're, you're in the arriving stage We have sur surviving paycheck to paycheck driving. You kind of have a goal, you know, what's out there. You got a little bit of money in savings. You're trying to pay off some debt, whatever you're uh, arriving. And the last one is thriving. These people probably have no mortgage. Um, they have lots of money in savings. They probably have an investments, whether it's in stocks or real estate or whatever. They're very generous with their money. They give it away uh, and they, they have worked the plan and now they're there. So I would imagine that you are in one of those four categories. So again, the question for today is if you have a, a, a business, if you're selling makeup, if you're selling a, you know Juice Plus or Beachbody or anything like that, Rowan Fields, um, Mary Kay, any one of those, I want you to comment. I want you to leave a comment uh, down below and let us know what your business is. Because today's Wealth Wednesday topic specifically is how to get $1,000 in savings. And I want to read just a little blip from Dave Ramsey, an article that's in the Financial Peace University book. It says, the, the secret to saving money. So last week we uh, on Wealth Wednesday, we talked about getting some money in savings. And I'm going to challenge you to get $1,000 in the bank in the next 90 days. $1,000 that's in your emergency fund. You don't touch it. You can set up a separate savings account that's just in there. $1,000. You can do it. You can do it. Getting $1,000 in the bank in savings is going to be one of the best things that you can do. It is your emergency fund. Um, if a water heater goes out or um, something significant happens to your vehicle, that's where you pull the money from the emergency fund. The emergency fund is not for, man, I really want whatever. 
Okay, it's a need based, you, you need it, you, you, it is not something that you really want, you need it, that comes out of your emergency fund. So we're gonna try to get you an emergency fund. If you're in the surviving mode that I talked about earlier, if you're surviving right now, I wanna try to get you to driving and part of that is gonna be getting some money in savings. So if you don't have a budget, if you have not worked out a where your money is going budget, that is your first step. That is step number one. There are some great apps. There's the Zero Dollar app by Dave Ramsey. There's Mint. You can use virtual wallet from the PNC. Um, there's a, you can use an Excel spreadsheet if you want, uh, but get a budget. Know where your money is going before you have it and before you spend it. So right now, it's the end of May. You should be in the budgeting process for June. You should be thinking about June's budget projected income and projected expenses, where all that money is going, make sure you account for all the little things. It's gonna take some time for you to get your budget under control, but with the goal of trying to get $1,000 in the bank. Now there's two ways that you can get $1,000 in the bank. You can either make some more money or you can spend less. So budgeting is gonna help you spend less. I want you to pull back on all of the credit cards, pay the minimum for now until you get the $1,000 in the bank. So just pull back a little bit until we get that $1,000 in the bank. And the other thing that you can do is make more money. So I wanna read just a little bit of this article here. Uh, it says, most people don't like or don't save like they know they need to, right? We don't save like we know we need to. Why? It's because they have competing goals. So true. The goal to save isn't high enough priority to delay the purchase of the pizza, the new computer, the China cabinet, whatever. So they purchase, buy, and consume all their dollars away, or worse yet, they go into debt to buy things. So we want to try to change this mindset. So if you're in this surviving or even in the driving mindset, uh, the two things you can do, budget, like I said, budget, budget, budget. The second thing you can do is either make more money, sp spend less. So if we're trying to get this thousand dollars in the bank right now. We want to make sure that we're trying to make some more money. So here are some ways that you can make some more money. There's a bunch of people that just posted their business that they do on the side. Um, maybe they do it full time now, but it probably started as a side thing. You can look into one of those, find one that you're passionate about and do that. It takes a little bit extra work, it takes a little bit of networking. Uh, there's very low cost for many of them up front, but that is a way that you can make some extra money to try to get that thousand dollars in the bank. The other thing you can do is you can uh, have a yard sale. You can sell some things. There's this brilliant app called Virage Sale. It's like a virtual garage sale, Virage Sale. You can download that, you can take a picture of something, write a, write a description, uh, throw it up there. And my experience has been within uh, two or three days, I have an offer on something and it's gone. So everything from uh, clothes to um, entertainment centers to wh whatever you have around your house, sell some things you don't need. I'm sure there's stuff you don't need. There's other places like Plato's Closet or Clothes Mentor or you know some kind of secondhand store where you can get some clothes that you don't wear, that your kids don't wear, that are in good condition, put them in a, in a, a box or a laundry basket and take them in and get some extra cash. Now don't spend that cash. We're trying to get $1,000 in the bank. So take that thousand or take that money, whatever you get, whether it's $5 or $100 and put it in that extra savings account. We're trying to get you to $1,000 because that $1,000 helps ward off Murphy's law, right? Murphy's law is whatever, whatever bad things could happen, they happen. The more money you have in an emergency fund, the less Murphy decides to show up, as Dave Ramsey always says. So we're trying to get you to that thousand dollars. Why are we talking about this on a leadership show? Well, this is part of leadership. It's part of self leadership. It's part of discipline. It's part of reaching your goals. It is it, you're able to invest in your future when you need to. And there are tons of parallels between by being financially secure and, and putting a high priority on growing and your finances. So I think the two go together. As we were going through FPU, I kept thinking in my brain, wow, there are so many parallels to, to financial freedom, being at financial peace and growing in your leadership. These, these daily habits. One of the th hard things for me has been in my leadership and also in my finances has been it's a long game. It takes investment over time. Uh, as 
John Maxwell says that leadership happens daily, not in a day. And so does building wealth. And so does getting out of debt and all these different, different practices. So we have to be committed. We have to put, you know, put our nose to the grindstone and really work at it. So the, the takeaway for today is get a budget for June. Right now, we're coming up on the month of June. Figure out what your expenditures are going to be. Figure out what your income is going to be for June. Put it down. Write it down. Get it on a paper. Put it in an app. Whatever you need to do. And the next one is if you don't have $1,000 in savings, figure out some extra money that you can make through a side business or selling some things or, or whatever, garage sale or whatnot. Uh, that's, that's your Wealth Wednesday for today. Share this and you'll be entered into our weekly resource drawing. And we will see you tomorrow.